Hello, it's Scott Manley here with, uh, well, something different. Uh, a lot of people send me designs, and I'm really terrible at getting to fly them, but I'm going to try looking at some of them. Now, this is the A All Direction vehicle of possible catastrophe. I, it's by Jose Apare, and yeah, so I guess it's a plane that's designed to fly in every direction. So first, I'm just going to bind all the engines to action groups so I can kind of switch them on and off as I need to them. Idea being that we'll fly this in one direction, then switch things on and fly them in another, and uh, hopefully I won't fall all apart. You see all the interesting aerodynamic uh, things hanging out the top there. Um, I strongly suspect that this may not actually work as intended, Partly because we all know the rule about center of mass versus center of lift, and if it's balanced in one direction, it may not actually be balanced in another. But let's start out easy, let's go forwards and see if it can actually just take off. It does have a lot of wings, and it doesn't look like it has a huge amount of mass. I'm not even sure where the control pod is in all this mess of things. Um, <laughs> It looks like the control pod is actually pointing upwards, so I suspect it's on the vertical stack, but... Oh, we're gonna go off the runway. Oh, no, we're gonna get airborne! Ha! Ah, look at that! That is marvelous, Jose! I was thinking originally, looking at this, would it fly? I was thinking, no way, Jose! Ha 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 ha! No, seriously, this is... Well, it doesn't turn very well. Um... It, the vertical rudders don't seem to do a whole lot, I guess because they're very near to the center of mass. Oh, and I'm going up a little. Maybe uh, I shall try... Okay, let's just try keep... Whoa, I'm going down now. Um, whoa, dear, 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 dear. Yes, that's the reverse. Trying to reverse did not work very well. It just spins me out of control. Excellent. So flying in reverse does not actually work. Okay, and that was just my old computer case. Let's uh, try that again. Restart to the runway and wait. What? What? Yeah, this thing doesn't even get off the launch pad. Uh, and for, let's try that again. I, I'm wondering if this is, this is like all directional, as in if you're at the North Pole, every direction is okay because they all go south. And, you know, whereas uh, with this, any direction you go, your um, game will quickly go south. Well, let's uh, see if I can move this. Ah, no, I'm hung up in a bit of my hardware. I still have one engine though. I don't think I'm gonna go very fast though. No? Come on. Uh, yeah, let's straighten this thing out again. And uh, maybe I can take off with both of these. No, nope, come on, get airborne, airborne. Oh, it's almost, it's, I can, it bump, it, oh no, I lost my engine. Oh, damn it. Uh, let's see, maybe I can just drive down the runway like this, dragging, dragging. No, I'm moving about three meters per second. I don't think that's going to work very well. Now, I know for a fact I can run at this speed if I want to. Um, okay. Well, uh, I don't think we're getting anywhere. It doesn't look like... Um, it doesn't look like I can turn either. I guess I can try time accelerating. Yay! Yes, time accelerating. Working as intended. Okay, let's uh, get back to the... Let's actually go back and we'll reload and relaunch and hopefully the physics glitch won't hit me as soon as I start up. Okay, so let's try uh, the vertical instead. I've bound that to the key one. Let's see if we can get enough thrust to lift myself vertically so that I may then apply the engines in whichever order I want. Just waiting for the power to build up here and lift me skywards. Lift me into the sky. Like, okay, yeah, let's just fire the other engine. Oh, look! They're nice, huh? It's actually coming up here. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. It's there! Yeah, to quote Sean Ryder. And let's try... Let's try moving over that way. I was hoping I'd be able to turn, but the whole vehicle does not want to rotate at all. Well, I'm just going to try and hover my way... Oh! What? The deuce happened there. Okay, well, there goes the engine. And there goes everything else. I think the pod is attached to the engine. And then the stress was too much. And the thing imploded under the force that was being applied to it. 
Yeah, okay, let's uh, try that again, and... Oh, yes, disaster. Let's go back to the space hangar again. Space plane hangar. Okay, is there anything else I can do to this? Can I fix that thing from exploding on me, or is that not going to work? Now, let's just clear the runway and proceed to a liftoff in a direction of, of my choice. Okay, so we'll just start going forwards. And instead of trying to go into reverse, let's use the lateral jets this time, right? Because those at least aren't going to mess up my center of mass versus center of lift thing. I should just be able to, like, side slip, like, you know, you do all the time in Star Conflict or any other game. There, look at that. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. Flying along. Now, just try to keep control a little. It does actually have pretty good roll authority because those... Um, those fins are so high up. However, it does seem to be wobbling a whole lot. I don't know what's going on there. There's no time acceleration going on. Um, still, you see it's sides slipping off towards the left using the right engine. And now I'm going to the right using the left engine. See, look, it's like magic. It totally works, but it, I think it's going to shake itself apart any minute now. Come on! No, 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 no! It's the wobble. Hey, it's the wiggler, and it's now falling apart terribly. Which engine should I fire now? Yeah, let's just fire the wall. And okay, well, that's enough of that. Let's move on. So another one that I've had get sent to me is by Cadillac Bob, and he's been very persistent. And I've been terribly remiss at actually tracking this. This is a an orbit capable VTOL, which the, he actually includes uh, uh, like a an interplanetary transfer ring that attaches to that large docking port. Unfortunately, I haven't got it launched at this time, so I'm just going to try and fly this thing into orbit. It does have VTOL capabilities. But for some reason, I'm confused over which engines to fire. There, I got those ones all firing. Now what? Oh, yeah, this is my problem. I've fired those engines, and they're not bound to action groups, and I can't turn them off. Um, I need to fix this. Come on, give me some control. There we go. There. That, look, look, that's a successful takeoff, and that is a stock aircraft I have not modified the action groups in any way whatsoever I've no idea how I'm gonna turn them off <laughs> let's go back to the to the space plane hangar and actually attach those vertical lift engines to action groups let's try that now again with the new action group power technology okay we'll just skip down the runway and there we go, you see, just short takeoff. Oh, we're getting most of our power from those jet engines. We're just using these to keep ourselves airborne and avoid all those nasty problems I have with taking off. Yeah, now we are flying with the wings, the wings providing lift. Not bad, I can throttle back a bit even. It, uh, well, let's see, it looks like it has three of the, the double length tanks providing fuel. The jet engines are feeding off of regular fuel tanks. It doesn't have a separate tank for jet fuel. Uh, but because the tanks are kind of uh, side by side like that, there shouldn't be a huge amount of problem with fuel load shifting during flight. Regardless, I'm going to try landing this thing vertically. Let's see how we can do it. Let's note the shadow coming down. I, I'm moving about 20. I'm going really rather fast here. I should probably flare just a little. Oh, and the whole thing fell apart. Yay. Oh, look, a bit survived. That's somewhat successful. It'd be nice to know how many bits survived so you could, like, have a success score. Okay, uh, let's try doing something else then. Let's try going straight up to start with. Hey, look at that. Hovering on those pillars of fire and just well, I'm just kind of slipping forwards there nicely um, Okay, that's looking kind of nice. I'm using what I'm using here incidentally is my you know, joystick so this is it's a Logitech joystick and the, the twist provides the yaw But otherwise it's pitch and roll and there's a throttle control on it The throttle control is really nice to have it lets me kind of adjust my throttle 
and touchdown. Hey, so it does actually do vertical takeoff and landing. So at least the VTOL part is true. Uh, let's uh, let's be a little more ambitious. Oh, uh, pitching backwards a little there. Uh, not good, not good, not good. Oh, 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 okay. Well, at least I didn't crash that time. Brakes. Okay, let's try that again. Throw, yeah, we'll use a bit. Use my rocket engine by accident to go forwards. No. Nope. There we go. We've got a little bit of forward motion, so I, that at least means the control surfaces should work for us. So one of the things with VTOLs, right, is that if they are stable in forward flight, then you run a real danger of them being unstable in reverse flight. Which means that as you slow down, right, leaning backwards, if you overcompensate and find yourself sliding backwards, you can easily lose control. Which means at that point you should have your main forward engines ready to go into action and give yourself a little bit of kick forward to counteract the the instability that will happen as soon as you find yourself going backwards. So I'm just going to try land on the roof, which is a standard thing, and I'm completely losing this. Oh dear, 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 oh! Yeah, like the way those things fly away. Okay, let's try going to orbit, the purpose for which this magnificent chariot of the gods was designed. We're just going to go straight forwards and I found that because this doesn't have inclined control surfaces, uh, you need the vertical engines to actually get you into the air, and you should also try and remember what order your action groups are applied so you don't end up crashing into the ground like this. Nice! Uh, okay. Let's try that again. Uh, restart flight. Okay remember which buttons the action groups are associated with. So I have the vertical thrusters, I have the forward rockets, I have the forward jet engines, and I have the air intakes all assigned to separate keys. Okay, so we're going to go up and then we're going to apply vertical engines only because we just want to give ourselves a little skip to get our nose off the ground. Well, yeah, a little bit of a rotation there, but we are into the air and on the first step of our magnificent voyage to the skies of Kerbin. So we're just going to pick up speed and try to go... Oh, yeah, we're going to pick up lag as we fly past the aircraft carrier that is parked off the coast. Time accelerate time. Uh, four times time acceleration. Let's take a look at the interior. You can see all the piping in there. You can also see how he's used... Um, docking ports to attach those engines to. I've noticed that uh, this guy uses a lot of docking ports in a lot of places. Not all of them are funct really functional, they're just kind of decorative. Like those ones right there, you can in theory dock stuff to them, but honestly I think that this could do a lot better if it dropped, ditched a lot of the docking ports. It needs at least one to dock to its like uh, interplanetary a, I don't know, interplanetary ring. It's basically a giant ring which it flies into docks and then it has nuclear engines to push itself around. Um, this one, however, well, we're, we're just kind of going up and it, it is going more sideways than upwards. It has a real problem getting enough lift to keep going upwards. And I don't know, it's kinda, I'm kind of lacking any feedback here. It's not, it would have been nice to have mech jab around so I could at least see the, the vertical speed, but I'm just guesstimating that we're, we're not going up. We're maybe going up at about 30 meters per second. And we're actually slowing down our vertical ascent by the looks of things, which is a problem. It's 14, 15,000 meters. So let's uh, kick this in so that we're actually going upwards more. This may be a little early to fire this. It's actually hard to tell based on the information I have. But we turn those off. We turn off the engines. And now you see that our apoaps is 20-something seconds away. Uh, this is a big problem because actually it doesn't... It's, it's not really changing. In fact, it's going down. Which means we're not quite orbital. In fact, we're very much suborbital. And we're not going to make it into orbit. Uh, we're just burning... 
we're burning a lot of fuel counteracting gravity here when we should be burning fuel to pick up speed. So actually now we're starting to, our timer, uh, our time to apoapse is increasing and that's a good sign. That means that we're actually slipping the bonds of Earth, our carbon, and getting into space. Anyway, uh, after a little bit, we run out of fuel and we are most definitely suborbital. So uh, we come back down. I guess we're going to try and aim to land on that island. Fire! 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 It's hot! It's hot! No, okay, that's us. So now I start to try and bring myself back under control and it just goes crazy. Um, this definitely has a center of mass issue after the fuel is burned. It, it definitely wants to go backwards. It is actually surprisingly stable in backwards flight. Unfortunately, the control surfaces don't work, but the escape system does. So we are able to jettison our way out, punch out, drop a parachute and escape. I must say that is a rather nice escape system that this thing comes with. And I must also point out that this actually flies pretty well in reverse. Okay, it spins a little, uh, but it's more or less keeping its nose pointed at the ground, or its tail pointed at the ocean. So I got both of those things wrong. But yeah, it, it's, it's contr it would be controllable. Anyway, uh, I decided that I wanted to make this thing just a little easier to fly, so I got rid of all those docking ports. I added in some extra RCS ports, some of the linear ports here, because when you get into those, you know, fore and aft pitching situations, you really want to have as much pitch authority as possible, which is why I put these ones in. And now the whole thing is actually surprisingly a lot more flyable. It's a whole lot more flyable. I've also adjusted the staging operations so that the space bar is what's going to punch me out if necessary. And we're just going to try and land on the vehicle assembly, not the vehicle assembly building, the space plane hangar because that's you know, where the love is. It's really nice that they actually fixed the collision model on this. For a while, you know, you would land and you would be like five feet above the, the actual curvature of the roof because they just modeled it as a square. But now it actually has corrugated, like, ceiling bits. Uh, there's a video out there of somebody landing an aircraft on the roof, and sadly you can't do that anymore because, you know, the roof is not really conducive to undercarriage. See that? Like, it has, it's landed, and if you turn the camera, you can see that the wheels are actually in the grooves. The collision mesh is correct. But yeah, this thing is actually re relatively flyable. Let's uh, see if we can move over to the vehicle assembly building. Since I called it out later and I somehow didn't, I got, the, got it confused with the space plane hangar. Okay, move forwards. No, I said move forwards. Come on, engines to get me moving forwards. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Once I'm moving forwards, like at least I can gain my control back, okay. So I'm going to try to turn myself and try not to fall around. There we are. We're lining ourselves up. Uh, I think I'm oscillating. I'm oscillating. Get out. Get out. Ah. Hey, flying away in this thing. How beauty. It, uh, look at that. That's like totally a little plane on its own. Nice. Look, he's on the ground and there are safely and there are pieces still flying around and explodifying in the air. That is an excellent escape system. Yes. Well, at least that works really well. It's nice, it's nice when that works. So yeah, um what one other thing I kinda thought would be nice is that since he doesn't have a dedicated jet fuel source, it's you could carry that. Uh, and that would be something you would ditch, but it would be nice to carry that during the early part of the flight and toss it away. That would certainly help with getting into space. Um, also, yeah, I did park this aircraft carrier over here, so let's try landing on it. So, we're coming in, and I'm going to have to ditch this tank, I guess. So, let's hit space. Oh, no, space is the escape system. Okay, oh, let, nice, nice! Yes, I totally meant to do that. See, I'm a Texas sharpshooter. <laughs> okay, let's actually try landing this again. Um, having fixed the staging, so I'm just gonna go in as slowly as possible. 
way below my stall speed. And every little burst is just killing more and more speed. 22 meters. Don't melt. Don't melt. Don't melt. Hey, look at that. Brakes. Brakes. Come on. Brakes work. Excellent. Excellent. We have landed this successfully. And with that, it's time for me to say, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.